What is up, Flutter devs? It's finally that time in our port of processing to Flutter for us to figure out how to deal with bitmaps. You see, in processing, you have the ability to query the pixels that are on the screen, uh, and you can load images and draw them onto those pixels and control blending and things like that. This requires that we have bitmap level support. The problem with doing that in Flutter is that all of the bitmap manipulation is done in the GPU. We can accumulate all sorts of drawing or painting operations, but you don't deal with pixels until you're way deep down in the system, and that just isn't going to work for us. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I'd like to have support for shaders so that we could at least have more control over what happens down in the GPU. Um, but really, in general, it'd be nice if there was some kind of, of access to those bitmaps, maybe control over those bitmaps. But we can't wait for Flutter to figure that out. Uh, we have APIs that we need to support. Let me show you a little bit what I'm talking about. Here's the API for processing. If we look over here under pixels, you see blend, copy, filter, get, load pixels, a pixels array, set, update pixels. All of those abilities, which are really important for a lot of the stuff that people do in processing, all of those abilities depend on the idea that you can access one or more pixels of what you're actually seeing on the screen. And you can make decisions based on those pixels. And you can, like right down here, you can update those pixels. The, the only thing that I think that we can do at this point is to move away from using a custom painter and actually maintain bitmap images in memory within the application. This probably means dramatically worse performance. We'll have to see if it means that uh, our performance degrades to a degree that we can't accept, but we're going to have to give it a try. Now, I don't know exactly what this solution is going to look like, so maybe we're going to run into some issues today, but we're going to try to replace, uh, we're going to try to replace our use of Custom Painter with, by simply drawing a bitmap to the screen, and then we're going to change that bitmap over time. Here we are in our core definition for Flutter processing. This on tick right here is going to be a place where we need to do a lot of our work. Right now, every time the clock ticks, we just update how much time has gone by. But this, I think, is actually where we're going to, to need to do all of our real, all of our drawing work, essentially. We'll come back to that in a second. First, let's come down to where we have the custom painter. So custom paint right here essentially needs to go away. I'm going to comment it out, and we'll see if we can get back to a working version of Flutter processing. What I'm going to replace it with is a raw image widget. And we will have current image, which doesn't exist yet. But we're essentially going to paint whatever this image is. So we need to come up here and declare that. And let's see. Um, it's complaining that it's optional or something. Or I think these might be two different image definitions. Let me see. Here's raw image, a widget that displays dart UI dot image. And this is an image. Ah, that's okay. So it's we have a naming conflict here. Up here under widgets, we are going to hide image. So then all we get is the image from the Dart UI package. 
and we here we have current image. And let's see, initially it's going to be null. Mm, I need to set it essentially to an empty image, but I'm not sure how to cr create one without a canvas. says to use the image descriptor API, a descriptor of data that can be turned into an image via a codec. Instead of all that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say image might be null. And then I'm going to come down into the build method. And I'm going to say if current image is not equal to null, then we're going to use a raw image. Otherwise, we're just going to stick a sized box in here. Okay. Now we're drawing nothing but a background color. And we come back here to on tick. The drawing operation might take more than one frame. And so we need to know whether we are in the process of drawing or not. Is drawing is what we'll use to track that. So if not is drawing, then we will do draw frame pass in elapsed time. <clears throat> we will update the elapsed time in the sketch. Uh, we will also say is drawing is true. And then we need to actually draw. Uh, so here's, here's the approach that I'm thinking. We know we know that we still want to use a canvas. All of our sketch operations up to this point are based on canvas. And we can use a canvas because we can actually instantiate our own canvas. We just need to provide a picture recorder, whatever that thing is. So then we come over here to picture recorder. And apparently we can just instantiate one of these. But it, but it says it records a picture. So the picture recorder records a picture. Well, what's a picture? A picture is this class right here. And then with the picture class, we can call to image and we get an image out the other side. And then we can refresh the UI and render that image. So that's what the plan is here so that we can keep using canvas, but we can produce a bitmap image. So let's see how we can make that happen. We'll start by creating a picture recorder. Then we will create a canvas. We will pass in the recorder. Then we will say widget.sketch. Do setup. Oh, sorry, sorry. First, we need to say canvas equals our canvas. Uh, and then we're, we also need to say that size, let's see, what were we doing? Size can just be the desired size. Um, let's see, size. Now that we're drawing in our own canvas, we're no longer 
limited to what size Flutter tells us to be. So that problem that we addressed previously <clears throat> may no longer be a problem now. Then we say do setup, and then we say on draw. All right, so this, this right here essentially runs us through a processing painting frame. It's just that instead of doing it inside of a custom painter, inside the Flutter render pipeline, we're doing this on our own time. And by the way, this up here should be a future. We want this to be an asynchronous method. Because while all of this is asynchronous, the next part is not. We're going to say image equals recorder I guess actually right here we'll say recorder dot end recording. Actually, sorry, that produces the picture. So through all of these calls right here, we're accumulating canvas operations. And then we say, okay, we're done accumulating canvas operations. Give us a picture. It's still not a bitmap. It's still just all those operations. But then we will say await picture to image and the width and the height since we have to report that for a second time I am going to say um, let's see final width final height so I don't have to repeat this a second time Okay, and now this image here is finally a bitmap. And that's why we have to await this operation right here. That's going to actually rasterize all of those operations into a bitmap. That's a that can take a long time. But once we have that image, then we're going to say set state current image equals image. And remember that current image is the one that we are now supposedly drawing to the screen. And then at the end of all of this, we will also say is drawing is back to false, which will then cause us the very next time it, the ticker comes in, we'll repeat this process, we'll draw the next frame. Now, in theory, I think that should be all we need to do, but who knows if that's going to work. What we will do to test it is we will actually grab our purple rain coding challenge and we will attempt to run it and see what happens. I don't know. I have no idea. I assume something is going to be a major disaster. We'll find out. What are the odds that that would work? <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty surprised. Oh, there's a little something going on there. Let's go see what we broke there. Mouse-related stuff. On pointer hover. Ah, fair enough. Okay, when I commented out the custom paint, we lost the sketch canvas key. Do a hot restart. Okay, no more null problem. All right. Well, what you're looking at now is not the standard Flutter render pipeline because our custom paint is no longer used, right? We can, we can delete that. Um, we can come down. Let's see, what is it saying is no longer used here? desired frame time, whatever. We'll come down here to the bottom and we will remove this entire sketch painter. So literally there is no more widget level painting going on. 
So let's talk about, just recap what is going on here. We already had this on tick running. This is using a normal ticker, right? On tick, previously we were just using that to keep track of how much time went by. Frame after frame after frame. Now what we're doing is every time Flutter gives us a tick, which should be about every 16 milliseconds, 60 times per second, if we are not already in the process of painting a frame, we paint a frame. That's this new method that we created. The first thing we do is we say, okay, we're painting, so don't call us again until we're done. Then we tell the sketch how much time has passed, and then we actually get into the painting. So we grab the we grab the width and the height because we're going to pass that into two different places. We re, we create this thing called a picture recorder. This records all of the operations that are done. I don't know what the particular format is. It doesn't really matter. All we know is that it accumulates a series of operations. And in this case, those operations are written by the canvas. So we call a bunch of canvas methods. The canvas then accumulates all of those operations in the picture recorder. So th this is where we accumulate the operations. We create the canvas with the recorder, but then here we run do setup and, and on draw, and that's where our sketch calls all of these methods that produce these visuals. The background color, the lines, whatever, it happens in these two methods right here. All of those, are, all those operations are accumulated in the picture recorder. Then we say, okay, stop recording which gives us essentially a snapshot of all of those. So, okay, here are the operations in the form of a picture, not an image, a picture. And then we say picture to image, which goes off and rasterizes those operations. It, it takes those operations, applies them to actual pixels, and gives us back a bitmap. Then this bitmap is literally painted to the screen. Now, this is essentially what happens in Flutter's normal rendering pipeline. But the reason we can't use Flutter's normal pipeline is because we can't ask Flutter, hey, what's the color of the pixel at this location? Because we don't have access to the bitmaps. But now, we do have access to the bitmap. I don't, let's see what operations are available. Image dot. So what we'll have to do is, is say two byte data, and then that byte data will allow us to query different colors and things like that. And then if we want to change, if we want to alter the bitmap outside of the usual operations, we have this image right here. In fact, what we're probably going to have to do, well, let's see. We know that we want to support something like Git. So we should be able to pass in an X and Y value and then get out the color of the pixel. Well, I think we'll leave that for another exercise because part of that, I think, means supporting this pixels array. And so what we're going to need to do is figure out the data format, the byte data format for image, and then make and then make that available in the format that processing wants. But what I was getting at is not only do we paint this image, we actually want to pass this image into the sketch. We're gonna we're gonna end up doing something like widget.sketch dot previous image equals image or something like that. Or, or maybe we'll just call it image. Image equals image. And then in the next frame, we can call the get method to go retrieve pixel values from the image that we painted in the previous frame. So now we are managing our images entirely. We're managing our bitmaps. And that's what allows us to query them. But I think this is a good place to stop for now. We've converted, uh, again, from custom painter and from, from widget-based canvas painting over to directly doing our own canvas painting 
and producing our own bitmap. So that's a big step in the right direction. I'm surprised that it worked out as well and as easily as it did. And I guess we can also, so while we're here, let's also run the star field example. All right, well, that one's still working too. Great. Might be a little bit slower than it should be, um, which would which would indicate lower performance. But hey, it's still working. Let's also try running a test. Because it's possible that painting in this way changes how things are rendered at the pixel level, and therefore, who knows if we maybe broke a test. So let's just, I don't know what test would be great to try. I want to try one that doesn't have too many, doesn't have too many tests in it in case it breaks. Um, shape, a bunch in shape. Let's try that one. So let's try flutter test, test, transform, transform test. Okay, let's try all the tests. Well, one failure, okay. This is environment size. So let's see what we're testing here. This is where we set the size. There's the master image, and there's the test image. So it still has the old size for some reason. All right, let's rerun that test and see what gets printed out. So flutter, test, test, environment, nope. Test, environment, environment, test. On which, I guess only one of these is failing. Which one of these is failing? The first one. Environment size example. Oh, well, I have multiple tests with the same name. What's going on here? Oh, no, width example, height example, size example. The one that's failing is size example, specifically. So width and height, for whatever reason, are still working, but then this size is not. Yeah, so the size is set in setup. But we've already created the canvas at that point. Let me go back and see. 
no, I guess we're not setting it until right there. Okay. Let me take these two here, width and height, and we're not going to ask for those until we create the image. As for size, I think we're just going to remove that entirely at this point. Let's save that. Let's come back and run those tests. Nope, now everything's blowing up. Oh, it hasn't been initialized, I guess. Well, we know it by default is 100 by 100. Okay, and it's still... Well, it's closer. Now, why isn't that background respecting the size? Where is the background painted? Okay. <clears throat> We're drawing the background before setup, before the normal setup is run. Then the normal setup changes the size, which would require painting the background again. But if anything is drawn within setup, then um, then we'd be painting over it. So we have an order of operations issue, and I'm not sure what the solution is to that. Let's go look at the size API. Defines the dimension of the display window. In a program that has the setup function, the size function must be the first line of code inside setup. Okay. My guess is the reason that size has to be the first thing that's called is because it will force, it will paint the background. Um, at least I assume that's part of why. If that's the case, then let's go to size. Let's see, size, inside of size, let's repaint the background. Now, if this is called without a canvas, then it's going to blow up. But let's see if that solves these tests. Hmm. 
Nope. Let's see. Why are you not painting? So here it should see, we have size, okay, which calls background, which should paint at that size. still at 100 by 100. Why is that happening? So we call size uh, because size is not updating. All right, now those tests pass. Okay, but now uh, based on what I just did, I may have broken other tests because I've significantly altered what happens when you call size. So let's run all the tests again. All right, all the tests pass. Let's also run the demo again, because again, I've changed some orders of operations. Let's make sure that we still can actually run the thing for real. All right, that one still works. And it, at least at some level, is respecting with the window size. And real quick, let's get some purple rain. All right, purple rain is still purple and it's still rain. Great. All right. Now everything seems to be working and we're working with bitmaps. So we're, we'll stop it there. And then in the next video, let's see if we can query pixel values, individual pixels and pixel regions. And then we'll see if we can set pixel values after that. So we'll, we'll start going down all the pixel API road because that will also be very useful for us uh, when we're, when we want to maybe paint some Perlin noise uh, or, you know, do some other kind of algorithmic painting of the screen, we need to be able to paint by pixel. So we'll start with those APIs in the next video.